Chapter 4. Synthesis and Constraint Entry. In this section of the Radiant Introductory Training Series, the basic constraint creation flow using lattice radiant will be presented. Chapter 4 consists of five sections. In the first section of the chapter, called Constraint Basics, the general flow for constraint creation with radiant is discussed. In section 2 of the chapter, creating LDC and SDC constraints with pre-synthesis timing constraint editor, Radiant's pre-synthesis timing constraint editor is introduced, and how it can be used to create timing constraints. In section 3 of chapter 4, called running synthesis, Radiant's task detail view and process toolbar are discussed, as well as how they can be used to run the project flow for a Radiant project. In the fourth section of the chapter, Lattice Radiant Reports, we will discuss Radiant's generated reports. Finally, in the fifth section of the chapter, using Netlist Analyzer, we will introduce Radiant's Netlist Analyzer and how it can be used to analyze a design synthesized netlist. Chapter 4, Section 3 Running Synthesis. In this section of the video series, we will be discussing Radiant's Design Process Toolbar and Task Detail View and how they can be used to run different parts of the Radiant project flow. As mentioned in the introduction, Radiant's Process Toolbar and Task Detail View can be used to run different parts of the Radiant project flow. As can be seen from the figure on the slide, the Process Toolbar consists of four buttons, each corresponding to a different part of the Radiant project flow. By default, the contents of Radiant's Task Detail View will be minimized whenever it is not selected. In order to expand the Task Detail View, click its icon, which is located next to the Process Toolbar. Similar to the Process Toolbar, Radiant's Task Detail View is divided into four sections, each of which also corresponds to a different part of the Radiant project flow. The main difference between Radiant's Process Toolbar and Task Detail View is that the Task Detail View contains several additional options, which can be enabled or disabled using the checkbox next to each option's name. Whenever a step in the Radiant project flow is ran, any options that are enabled within that step will also be executed. For example, since the post synthesis simulation file option is enabled in Radiant's task detail view in the figure on the slide, a post synthesis simulation file will also be generated whenever synthesis is run. One important thing to remember about Radiant's process toolbar and task detail view is that the selections made for the different steps in task detail view also apply to their corresponding steps in the process toolbar. With that said, we are going to briefly discuss some of the options available in Radiant's task detail view and what they are used for. Ultimately, there are three kinds of options that can be enabled in Radiant's task detail view. The first type of option is used to generate simulation files. As can be seen from the figure on the slide, the post synthesis and gate level simulation file options will generate post synthesis and gate level simulation files if they are enabled. The second type of task detail view options are used to generate timing analysis reports for various parts of the Radiant project flow. The options that generate timing analysis reports are post synthesis timing analysis, map timing analysis, place and route timing analysis, and IO timing analysis. The last task detail view option is IBIS model, which is used to generate an IBIS model during the export file stage of the Radiant project flow. Now that we've introduced the different types of options in Radiant's task detail view, we are going to briefly discuss how synthesis can be ran. There are three ways synthesis can be ran. The first way to run synthesis is to click the Synthesize Design icon in the Process toolbar. The second way to run synthesis is to double-click the Synthesize Design header from Radiant's task detail view. Finally, the third way that synthesis can be ran is by clicking the green run icon in the process toolbar. One thing to note about the run icon is that it will run the entire Radiant project flow and generate a bitstream, while the first two methods will only run synthesis. Once synthesis has completed, the process toolbar and task detail view will update to reflect that the synthesized design step has finished. Another useful feature of Radiant is that it has additional run options that can be accessed by right-clicking anywhere in the process toolbar or task detail view. As can be seen from the example on the slide, there are five additional run options. The first option, Run, works the same as the green run icon, and will run the entire Radiant project flow. The second option, Force Run, will force a step of the Radiant project flow to run, even if it has already been ran. The third option, 
called force run from start, will rerun the entire Radiant project flow, starting with synthesize to design. The fourth option, called stop, is used to stop Radiant from running the project flow. Radiant will stop at whichever step it is at whenever this option is selected. Finally, the fifth option, cleanup process, is used to clean up the entire Radiant project flow. For example, if cleanup process is selected, the example in the slide will have its project flow reset, allowing users to rerun synthesis. That concludes this section of the introductory training series. To view the next video in the chapter, select the video titled Section 4.4, Lattice Radiant Reports.